Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Hello. 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 How do you feel after that then? Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice. okay, hands free then, your phones and everything. One hand here. One hand here. Give yourselves a huge round of applause. <laughs> really good. Really really I've got ideas for my next four cookbooks. <laughs> right now, on that note, um, I'm now going to demonstrate some of the winning things that have gone into the hamper today, which are local produce from where I live now in Dorset. I am London born and bred, but um, about 18 years ago we up to moved to Dorset and opened a cookery school. And now I'm going to show you some of our favourite dishes. Very simple. Our message at the cook school is Simple is good, and good is simple, okay? Um, I'm a great believer in that. I've been cooking for a long time now, and we're very fortunate to live where we live because we have some of the most amazing produce, all right? And the first thing that we are going to do today is that we're going to cook with gin. Yay! And you can do this dish with gin or vodka. In actual fact, the farm across the way from where I live make Apple balsamic, which is in the hamper, which I'm going to use later on, an apple syrup, and an apple pocket. And they've just developed a new apple gin. Amazing. The apple balsamic is beautiful, which I'm going to use later on. But first of all, I need someone to help me. Harriet! <laughs> Give her a round of applause. <laughs> okay, now, this is so simple to make. Right, this is what I call a no-cook starter, and you can serve it with some beautiful bread. Um, and what we're going to do first of all is we're going to take some lovely smoked salmon, and what I want you to do is just pick the salmon up there with your fingers, like so, and I just want you just to take it like that, and I want you just to place it onto the platter for me. So meanwhile, back at the range, you want to get your vodka or your gin. And you want to get. Have you, by the way, have you had a good day today? Yes. Yeah. You enjoyed it? Yeah. Is it now nice to relax? Yeah. yeah. I'll get the gin out. <laughs> no, just, just do what you're doing. That's absolutely yeah. beautiful. Okay? So we're going to put some gin in a kilmer jar. I call this gin and tonic sun. Alright? Um, the next thing you want to put in is some chopped shallot. This is very, very fine chopped shallot going in there. The next thing that you're going to put in, and I'd like you just to repeat that whole thing again, the fat is a little bit, have you got a peeler there Jack? Yeah, this one here. A little bit of lemon rind, okay, going in. So that's your lemon going into your kilner jar. Next thing you're going to put in is some extra virgin olive oil. Is it actually quite nice to sit back and watch someone else cook? Yes. <laughs> I bet. Okay. So you're making like a vinaigrette. Lovely. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to take a little knife and we are going to, sorry my darling, um, just chop some dill. Now these are very, very classic flavours. And often the reason that they're classic is because they're fantastic. They're flavours that really, really work. You all look very serious, are you all right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm just roughly chopping the dill. And what I'd like you to do is put the dill into there for me. Yeah, and smile at the <laughs> And then a little bit of salt and pepper going in there. Seasoning. Seasoning. Very, very important. It's one of the things that you are first taught as a chef is how to season everything. Alright, yeah, good. And that pepper in there? Yep. Okay. So let's see if we've got everything in there now. And a squeeze of lemon. Just a little squeeze of lemon. That should tonic very well in there. All with me so far? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> Next thing we're going to do is put the lid on. And you're going to give it a bit of a shake. Alright? When you open the lid, it will smell fantastic. This is a lovely one to do. It's no cook, it's really simple, really easy. We've got a beautiful smokery not far from the cook school. That is look oh, cook. Wow. <laughs> yeah. We use kilmer jars a lot in cooking because 
you can make a dressing in there, um, you can do all sorts. So look at the thing you did. Well there, girl. <laughs> More pepper, more black pepper going in there, and a little bit more of the dill. That's gone real big. Yes, you're going to get all these recipes. Really. Right. Okay. Touch more. Actually, no. I'm not going to put salt. Why? That's quite salty. So I'm thinking about it. One more shake. Gin and tonic, girl. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want you to take this now and I just want you just to spoon that. And sort of use the back of the spoon to spread it. You're now going to become Nigella. Oh, I'm doing this again. I need to make cheese. As you are, just spooning that over. So you've got the lovely dill, you've got the gin, yeah? Just going over there like that. Beautiful. Mm. Smell the juice. Don't do this too far ahead. I wouldn't do this any more than sort of 30, 40 minutes. Can you cook the salmon? Yeah, it will make the salmon it will go in too much. So what you could do is if you wanted to do stuff ahead, you could make the dressing but maybe don't put the dill in because your the dill will lose its colour. Yeah. So you could get it already and then sort of 30, 40 minutes before you serve it. That's so Doesn't that look beautiful? Yeah. Give her a round of applause. Okay. okay, so moving on now, salmon and beetroot. Alright, now this is beetroot which has not been cooked. Okay? Um, and it, so it's just been peeled and grated. We're going to put just a little bit of red onion into there. Is it? No, no, just a couple of handfuls, I'll tell you when. Lovely. Ten. Lovely, good. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to mix those together with that little spoon. And we're going to add a little bit of apple balsamic, because I want this to be a little bit gentle. This is the balsamic vinegar, which is made from apples. Um, it's very gentle. And I'm just going to put a little bit in and stir it through. Salt and pepper again, please. That would be lovely. Lovely. God, it's so nice having a kitchen to play. <laughs> <laughs> I've got two here. Okay, and then fold that through together. Lovely. Good, good, good. And then a little bit of olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil. She's so quick, I can't keep up with her. Okay, and then we're going to taste. So let's taste together. We might put a pinch of sugar in, we'll see. Alright, so remember the apple balsamic is much more subtle than the normal balsamic. More salt. More salt. Remember though what it's going with. Tiny bit more. Yeah. Yeah. We'll put a bit more vinegar in. Remember, we'll get a little bit of acidity yeah. from here, but we'll put a touch more in. Okay. Now you can use normal balsamic, but be careful because often it can be a little bit vinegary, can't it? Mm -hmm. You want the sweetness of this to come through. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we do another taste together. One of those dishes, the longer it's left, the better it gets. Yeah. So if you make it the day before, just make sure it's not too chilled from the fridge. It's delicious. Yeah. yeah, you know, mm. Mm. that's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> what I'd like you to do now is very carefully just pile it all very gently into there. Um, we went, I've just come back from Berlin. We went to this very expensive restaurant called Rocker and they specialised in steaks. And the starter was a classic, like just had mozzarella, avocado, rocket, tomato. It looked beautiful when it came up. But they'd just literally taken it out of the fridge. It was freezing cold. 
and who couldn't taste any iron. And I think that's one of the things I learned when I went to Thailand many years ago, was that you taste far more when food isn't boiling hot and cold. You really, really taste it. Yeah. Give this lady a round of applause. So in a minute, I'm going to show you how to serve this in a rustic way and how you can serve it plated with some creme fraiche. And it's really, really lovely, served with um, just some good bread on the side. Maybe some black rye bread would be really lovely with that. Or, um, dare I say, sourdough, although I think sourdough's been a bit overdone lately. I'm rebelling against sourdough. <laughs> I'm going to be doing something else. So maybe some rye bread. scones or cheese cups? What would you like let's, do the, um, let's do the cheese cups. Okay, so that's starter number one, and that's using um, two of our products here, which is the gin or the vodka and the um, balsamic. Okay, this is Jack's way of telling me what I'm going to be doing. So, um, this is something that we, um, I call this, because we live in Dorset, and it's the land of cream teas. Okay, and I have to be honest with you and say, I'm not really... I'm much more a savoury bird. I really love cheese and I love savoury things. So this is like a savoury cream tea, okay? So, first of all, take some double cream. It's ever so good for you, this. <laughs> is that milk, Jill? Yes. And some milk. Okay? So this is like a savoury cheesecake. And it is so delicious. You can either do large ones and it will serve about six people, or you can do little espresso cups. Yeah, all together. Ooh. As a little taster. Okay, so what we're going to do now is that we are just going to literally heat the um, milk and the cream, and we're going to add the cheese. And the cheese that we are using is Stilton. Okay. Um, we also have something in Dorset which we use a lot called Blue Vinny. And Blue Vinny is a wonderful cheese. You can't really grate Stilton or Blue Vinny. Um, and so all I'm doing now is just putting the milk, the cheese, <coughs> and the cream. The important thing with the cheese is not to boil cheese because when you boil cheese, you boil a lot of the flavour away. Okay, so just sprinkle that in there like so. Once again, this is so easy and I'm in a moment going to make some thyme and walnut stones which are going to be served alongside. But we're also going to do something else with this because something that works really well with Stilton is pears. We're going to do a modern salt and pepper pear, right, which I'll talk to you about. You're making the right noises here. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to wash my hands. Now, if you don't like blue cheese, you could do this if you wanted to with a good, strong, mature cheddar. Um, you could use um, the mix of blue. Uh, what's it called? The one that's golden and blue. Shropshire blue would work really, really nicely. Yeah, anything like that. So, in here we have got egg yolks. I'm not going to add salt at this moment, but I'm going to add just a little bit of cayenne pepper to the egg yolks. This recipe is based on a very famous writer. It's Roly Lee, wasn't it? Yes. Roly Lee, I don't know if any of you remember him, but he used to write, I think it was for, I think, The Guardian, um, or it he might have... with Nigella, with Alistair. Yes, he was he close to the Yes, yes. That, was his yes. yes. that was yes. his recipe. Yes. He does this with, with Parmesan and cheddar. Yes. And this is where we, because we all nick ideas, you yes. know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, just very gently, and I'm going to need that black pepper, which is here. And he served it with um, gentleman's relish, anchovy paste on toasted fingers. So you could dip into the cheese. So again, quite salty. So 
怒情，怒情，怒情，怒情。Okay, what's the oven set to, Jack? For this, the oven set to uh, one. Here we go, one fifty. Okay, that gas oh. yes. So we're going to do these. Are we going to do any? I've got a jug, Jack. Yeah, for the same thing. And you can, when you cook, I can see now that this is getting really hot because I can see the steam, as you can probably see, coming off here. I got your large so one. So when you cook, it is about using your senses. You know, it's how something looks, smells, even how it sounds in the pan. You use your senses. Okay. So I'm just making sure that all that cheese has been melted. And it almost is, I just need a little whisk. Is there a yes. little whisk there, Jack? It's nearly completely melted. I'm going to taste it just to make sure that I'm happy that it doesn't need any more seasoning. And remember, always, if you're not sure about the heat of something, use the, what I call the residual heat of the pan. Okay? If it's going too far, rather than messing around, turning it off, use the residual heat. I'm just going to taste it now, just to check it's okay. <laughs> I think I'll take that from the I think that needs a little bit of salt. Just a little touch. Salt going in there, I'm working that through. You've got your cayenne. I've got my cayenne in the yolk, and I'm just going to get that onto my yolks now, just a little bit at a time. So, what you're doing here is you're making, are you all right? You're making a savory custard. Good tip is to put a little um, cloth under the bowl. Make sure it doesn't curdle. You like it when things go wrong. <laughs> There we are. So don't boil that cheese. And then into your jug, which will make life a lot easier. Like so. You can make these two or three days ahead. They're best served room temperature, not hot. I'm afraid you all have them hot today, I'm afraid. But they're pretty good hot, but best served room temperature. Don, can you get my right side? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to pour that in there. I might not fill them quite as much as I can. In they go. And they're going to be cooked in a bain-marie. How am I doing, Paul? Doing very well. Yeah. Filling up the top of your sheet. <laughs> <laughs> right, now I need an assistant. Someone to come and help me. Who's going to come and help me now? Suzanne. Okay, so we'll do the scones next. <coughs> so, Suzanne, what I'd like you to do is sift the flour mm -hmm. and the baking powder into the bowl. Mm -hmm. All right. And smile to your audience. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jack? Thank you. Yeah, that can go again. So tell them about that. Okay, just bain marie, boiling water, and I'm probably going to go a third of the way up the pub. So 50 per mm -hmm. yeah. minute, you might need to go up a little bit more. Okay. Okay. I'm going to do it in the oven, I'm going to pop them in the oven, and then keep them there. Okay, so that was the baking powder in there, wasn't it? So what I'd like you to do now is rub in the butter yeah. with your fingers, yeah. and get that rubbed in. And for this, I am going to chop some lovely fresh thyme, and I have got some walnuts here. These scones um, are beautiful, uh, topped with guacamole, yeah, and crispy ham, um, and served as a little canapé, if you make them really small. Um, but they're beautiful served with cheese on the cheese board. And at Christmas, that's what I did. I did the salt and pepper pears, and I did and for this time of year, I think, when the weather's still cold, these scones would be beautiful with a homemade soup. Something like a celeriac soup or a Jerusalem artichoke soup. 
something like that it would be wonderful. All right. So it goes back to that whole thing of simple is good and good is simple. Because for me, it's about having great food all the time. And I have to say, I'm not just saying this, but I've been so impressed by you all, everybody, Jack, today. Oh, the standard each year just, just goes up. So thank you. Give them a little bit of a shake. All the lumps come to the top. Yeah? And then lift your fingers out of the bowl. I taught Mary to bear everything she knows. <laughs> not I hasten to add. Okay? So I'm going to put the walnuts in there. Walnuts or chopped hazelnuts. And they're just going to work those last few lumps. Is there any more for this, Jack? I've got which you've got there. Mike needs just a little bit of milk. Okay, lovely. Good. Can you all see that in the screen? Yeah? What you could do if you wanted to, is you could crumble in some ham. Yeah? Uh, but we're going to use that for something else. Okay? So, what we're going to do now is just simply stir through the buttermilk. So it's been measured out. So put, I would put two thirds in. All right. So put that in there like that. Just a little bit more. A tiny touch more. Lovely. And then just stir it. Through. So we've got some buttermilk here. You could use yogurt. Um, you could just use um, uh, creme fraiche. You could use creme fraiche, sour cream if you sour wanted cream. to. Yeah. Um, let's just do a little bit more. I think that will probably take it all. More. See, she's using her eyes. Turn that up and look. You can see that, can't you? It's gone a little bit clumpy now. Yeah? Last yeah? no, little bit. I think it will take yeah. it all. Uh, did we put salt in that? We didn't, did we? Okay, so a little bit of salt going in there. Tiny bit more. I do like salt. All right, going in there. And then finally, let's now see, just with the last little bit going through, and what I want you to do now is just put it on the table top. Jack, can I just have some extra flour, please? Yes. Scrape it all off the spoon, that just can be So, lovely and simple and very dulcet. All right, and what I would like you to do now is just, don't knead it, but just pat it out a bit. Lovely. Look at the concentration on her face there. <laughs> Good. Lovely. About how thick do you want it? Well, I think you're probably about there, actually. I'd stop, and let's just have a little look. How many does it make, Jack, little ones? Uh, probably about 12. Okay. Are we going to glaze them or shall we just have them with a little bit of um, flour on the top? Bit of flour. I think. What, a, what do you think? Well, I can get glaze if you want to. No, no, let's do flour. flour. Let's do flour. Let's okay. Keep it simple. Keep it relevant. I remember when I was at college training to be a chef. Years ago, this is in 1976. Of course, I was about two at the time. <laughs> and um, we would put chopped parsley on everything mm -hmm. and tomato roses on everything. And now, only ever make your garnish relevant to your dish. Right. Um, so we use this little one. This one, Jax? Yeah? So you're just going to cut them out for me now, and then pop them onto bake, baking parchment. All right, so really lovely and simple, lovely and fresh. You can freeze them. You could use them as a nutty cobbler top if you wanted to. Um, when I worked in America years ago, learning how to make peach cobbler with a cobbled top was absolutely fantastic and doing a savoury one as well she's doing very well i think she deserves a big round of applause <laughs> lovely good and we're going to make the rest of those for me aren't we like that so making these very what i call instant dreads is lovely because it's real food, it's real ingredients. I always get upset when I see people buy scones that are ready made. 
because there's nothing like the real <coughs> thing. Simple is good, and good is simple. All right? Well, lovely. I think you're doing a great job. Right, now I'm going to finish this off, and you're going to come over here, because you think you finished with Oh, right. <laughs> okay? So, salt and pepper pears. Right. Now, these are like a kind of savoury pickled pear. All right, and what you're going to do first of all yep. is you're going to take those pears and you're going to put them in our lovely circular pan, cut side down. Oops, sorry. Wait, sorry, don't worry. Now you can do these in a roasting tin if you want. These go brilliantly with pork. They go great on the cheese board. They're wonderful served with our cheeses. And you can have them with um, air cured meat, charcuterie. Okay. Quite Don't worry, that's perfect. Now, what I want you to notice is what I've done. I've peeled them and I've just removed the little core bit there. All right. So what you're going to do now is you're going to sprinkle over this mixture, okay. which is sugar, salt, and pepper. Okay. So what I want you to do is just sprinkle that over the, all of it. All of it. Yes, all been mixed together. Sugar, salt and black pepper going over the top, all of it, yeah. Do you want to some for the other two? No, because we're not going to cook. Have you got that flour again, Jack? Can you put these scones in the oven? Okay, lovely. All righty, so now what I want you to do is put a little glove of extra virgin olive oil in the pan. Okay, so stone's going in. Oh. Good. The final ingredient to go in is cider vinegar. Mm. Not malt vinegar. There's only two things you use malt vinegar for, and that is for cleaning copper pans and on your fish and chips. <laughs> All right? My husband the other day has decided that he's an expert in poached eggs, and we didn't have any white wine vinegar, so he put malt vinegar in, and the eggs went brown. Mm. It was not a good look now. <laughs> You can either cook these on top, or you can transfer them to a roasting tin and roast them in the oven. Or if you've got one of these wonderful pans, they will go into the oven as well. But they need to yeah, go on a small tray. Right. Okay. So in they go. Where are they going, Jack? Uh, they can go. Oh, they, they, they go in there. They won't cook in there. Until they go You'll have to put them in here, Jack. Pop them on top of this I pot. Okay, you can now relax, Suzanne, and a big round of applause. Okay, so moving on now to, in true television style, here's some pears we prepared there. <laughs> All right, so we cooked these earlier. They are best served at room temperature. Um, is that oven been turned up now, Jack? Yes, the scones. I'm going to change I'm going to take the pears out. Okay, Okay, so we're going to move on now to scallops. So I need someone to come and help me for this. Is it George? George, yeah. George round of applause for George. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to do a lovely scallop recipe and we're going to use something called black garlic sugar, which we've also put into the hamper. Now, I don't know if you've ever tried this. Right, what I'd like you to do is go around and get everyone to have a sniff. Okay, so this is muscovado sugar, which has been flavoured with black garlic. Black garlic is a very, or well, has been a trendy ingredient now for a few years. <coughs> now in this country, in Dorset where I live, they make black garlic ketchup, black garlic sugar, you can buy the black garlic cloves. And today we're going to cook our scallops in black garlic sugar. Okay, but before we do that, you're right, honey. Okay. Yeah, we are going to make a lovely, if only I could open it up, we're going to make a lovely butternut, 
So what I'd like you to do, this is butternut, which we've roasted. George, I'd like you to pop it into there. And it's just been roasted in a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper. You can do this with sweet potato, or you can do this with butternut. All right, and that can just go in like so. Okay, lovely. Good, now I'm not gonna put garlic in this because we've got the black garlic going onto the scallops. So what we're going to do now is we are going to hit the switch off. I think we just turn it and we can just start that. Lovely, okay, so we're gonna put in some zucchini. So sesame paste, I would say you're about there. Good. So zucchini and a little bit of parsley going in there as well. Put that through like so. Lovely. The jack, look, does that possibly have a line? Good. A little bit of extra virgin olive oil, not too much. Lovely. Good. Right. So, are you all still with us? All right, so we've made our lovely butternut hummus. Let's have a little look at that lovely, oh, texture. Now you could, if you wanted to, put in turmeric. Like so. So you've got your Stilton cheeses going on the top, like so. And I'm just going to remove that last thing out. The ham is actually quite nice if you just stick it in the top. Or in the springtime, asparagus <coughs> is kind of nice. Just sitting in on the top like so. We get wonderful um, British air cured, not Parma ham, but British, British Parma ham in Dorset, which in Somerset, which is wonderful. Let's see. Yes. Is it okay if I one without? I will do four without. Four without. Actually, I won't. I'll do. There. there is enough one. Here. Yeah? Don't worry, don't worry. Is there? Sometimes we do apple crisps when we do this, which is really, really good. Okay? So this is what I'm talking about a Dorset whiskey. You have got your cheese your pears and the final thing that you've got are your scones you can come round here just don't, can they, can they come round here? Come round here. Come round here. Come round here. 